Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art of the City. It's been a little bit of time since our last show, but I'm really excited today because we have such a phenomenal guest coming on the show. You know, I know the kids have gone back to school virtually. As you know, I have a 13 year old, so it's been a bit of a challenge. So we took a little break from Indian country where we viewed, I believe it was almost 22 artists during one month. And it was incredible seeing everybody from culinary chefs to uh, sculptors, painters, dancers. And it was a really incredible ride. But I thought here we are September, mid-September. It's time to get back to bringing amazing artists that are gonna inspire you. And today I have an artist that has an incredible story. He's made a huge impact on the world, not only through his paintings, but through his uh, clothing line, through many different projects that he's been involved with. And he is coming live out of Texas. So we had a little bit of a, a technical issue, but we're right back on. And so let me see if I can bring this amazing artist on to live stream. And then we're gonna just talk about his inspiration for the arts and what it is that he has really kind of overcome in his life to bring this incredible art to all of us as um, viewers. So let's bring him on. This is Jumper Maybach. Yeah, hey, hi, how you doing? Hi, Jumper, welcome to Art of the City. I love being here. Well, we in love having world. you and we need more people like you to inspire us in these days. Yeah, so, um, definitely. So where are you live streaming from exactly? Houston, Texas, at, in uh, my actual art boutique located in Uptown Park. Okay. Well, I, I pretty much think that every one of the viewers could hear by your accent that you're definitely a true Texan. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's funny. When I travel the world, as soon as I open my mouth, they say, you're, Tex you're from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to, hard to miss. So did you grow up in Texas? Yes, I was born in Corpus Christi, Texas, and I've been in Houston ever since my parents moved here when I was uh, 13. Okay, so I read a little bit about your background. I, I looked at your artwork. It's just so amazing. And so I would say um, the colors and the movement, it's so inspirational. I mean, it brings you just happiness looking at it. And I read a little bit about that you had some struggles that you overcame in your life that brought you to this place as being an artist. Do you mind sharing a little bit with oh, the viewer no. about that? No, uh, actually, I worked for the federal government for uh, 37 years. And during the time, the last 10 years of my federal service, I ended up in this, um, I was being bullied on the job because of being a gay man. And it got so bad that I, I, people that don't quite understand it, unless you're in my shoes or experienced the same a type of torment that I had experienced, that it was in the pit of my stomach where it just felt like I was just so sick that the thought of driving in to work every morning, it was, it was that bad. Wow. And I ended up having to, you know, file a case that ended up, I eventually prevailed and won, but it's this idea that uh, a jumper, it took even a long time after jumper came into my life to, to uh, uh, before this case actually was, uh, that I prevailed in it, but, in April of 2011, I, I it was one of those nights before I had to go work in the morning that I just got to a point I was on my, at the end of my rope. I just couldn't thought of having to go to work the next morning. And I literally got down on my knees and went into a deep meditation right. that made me, and I actually had this awareness that I came out of that it was just like a spark to said to be jumper and to paint and to spread your mes message of ending hate, intolerance and bullying in the world through my art. 
well, I had a lot of visions and a lot of things that told me to do what I, I did. And when a door opens, don't question it, just go through the door. Well, you know, I'd never painted anything other than painting a wall in my house. I never <laughs> had no experience in doing that. So literally, I went out and I bought a whole lot of paint and canvases. And I just went painting like crazy. And my partner told me because you, you have to kind of bear in mind, kind of understand that I had this house where I had a formal dining room, formal living room put silk carpets, Persian carpets, silk this, silk that, crystal this, crystal that. I had this beautiful house that I basically didn't care when I went into this this Jumper Bay Box State. And I was just throwing paint like on, on these canvases and stuff. And that went on for about a year. My partner said, you know, you need to get this art out where people could see it. And I ended up having a show, my first show in 2013, that the art was selling. And I also had a, 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 a museum that had show, shown up to the, to the show. And they said, we would like to take you to Art Dubai. And I thought, well, when? And they said, next month. And my partner's standing wow. there and he goes, he said, well, there's a door opening. Go through the door. That's what your vision was. Do it. So I ended up in Art Dubai and I met the royal ruler of the ruler of Dubai and all of the the the, the court would tell me, oh, you're the jumper Maybach, uh, you're the uh, Pollock of the 21st century, Jackson Pollock of the 21st century. Right. With a lot of color. <laughs> so I ended up on a lot of red carpet events and it was like a it was a really interesting because I ended up touring embassies and and met movie stars and one of them was Pepe Cerner that read about my story and he said you need to have a, a film made on a documentary film based on your life story because this could really help other people so that kind of opened the door to where a film based on my life story, which won four film awards, has uh, literally been sent, and it, it's actually been subtitled in uh, French, Mandarin, and English, and it's being marketed to like 80 countries. It's going to be subtitled in all right. these different languages. So we're just waiting to see who will pick it up. Wow, that's an incredible story. So let me back up a little bit. So when you were working for the federal government, was that during the time when the military was very you know, strict about don't ask, don't tell, and that yeah. whole era of Correct. really oppression of anybody that was gay or um, anybody who had a different orientation even? Yes, correct. And uh, the, 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 I, oh, well, I'm going to tell you anyway. I'm out of there. I'm retired. So right. <laughs> retaliation won't happen because I'm not there anymore. <laughs> right. And, uh, but the, the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, which was kind of interesting because, you know, most veterans served in their country to give everybody their rights. 90, 99%. But the ones that, went after me was usually these big military high ranking individuals that that kind of that did what they did to me but it's, it's a long story but but the, I guess my question is is how you know here you are you've chosen this career you're serving did you have to just keep it completely under wraps and yes, not never, anybody I know never. your lifestyle or correct? I was outed on the job and nothing that that's the most terrible thing that can happen to somebody because I really never out. I never came out and to be outed on the job. That's the worst scenario that you could ever experience is yes. to be outed on the job. It's one thing to tell your 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 family 
but to be outed on a job to where people that had known me for years basically came up after they discovered I was gay. They'd come up and say, oh, you're one of those. And we wow. really don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. So I, it was a, a lot of things like that that was very emotional uh, 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 to me. And, Did it uh, also affect your ability to, um, you know, go up to the next level as far as being in leadership and, and that type of thing? Well, you know, the thing is, is when it happened, I actually were in a, in a, I don't know if you understand that I was in technology. So, but I mm -hmm. actually virtual worked in virtualization where I built out and I took computer rooms with, let's say 500 servers and I could convert them down to just one server and all of those working off one server is very so I basically was saving the Department of Veterans Affairs. Just one hospital's the, the electric bill might be two hundred fifty thousand dollars a month, based off of those computer rooms generating all that stuff. So I was literally saving them a lot of money. So I I basically uh, uh, was at the level where I wanted to stay until I would retire. Okay. Uh, so. I wasn't on a road of, up going any higher than I was. And you were already one of those really smart guys that had already <laughs> brought something really special. So that was probably a good thing because you may have been terminated had you not been that linchpin in, in that uh, field that you were in. Yeah, correct. And there's a lot of things that they do to you that is very subtle that you don't know that they could be leading you down this trap <laughs> and you have to be aware but i had enough experience to to get into technology i kind of worked my way up from the ground up uh, and, and 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 basically knew a lot of the policies and the and the uh the but, but, so they they couldn't pull a fast one on me right I, I had, but but having to go to work every day feeling like, you know, almost like you're having to be paranoid on every little thing that that wears you down as much too. Sure. And probably also feeling like a second class citizen. Correct. And where, where the biggest problem I had with it was Bill Clinton back in the nineties when he was president, he wrote an executive order that no discrimination will occur within government with anybody under that has a, a sexual preference under I remember sexual that. orientation and to give you some idea all the executive orders all these presidents right unless the agency or the department wants to accept it and put it in place it won't go it won't work so there's even these things that maybe president uh our current president has and all these executive orders he's writing <laughs> he might have some people out there say oh i'm not going to institute this in my department so they choose not to so right. the department of veterans affairs basically turned their head on that policy they didn't support it they they didn't do anything uh, uh, to enforce it and so so, you got the brunt of it uh, yeah so i ended up i had to file eeocs that actually i prevailed in that what they tell me is that a lot of the 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 cases that they have won all the way up to the supreme court for people having different sexual orientation was they always quote the workman versus the jumper made for the uh, jumper maybe uh the, the workman versus the Department of Veterans Affairs. So I kind of was uh, like a, 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 a little guy in the backdrop that nobody knows about, but I, I kind of helped the, the gay community get to where they're at, where they're, they have a little bit more, a lot more ability to, to function in life because they have some protections now. That's that so great. Have. And it's so great that you had the uh, courage to stand up to such a you know that's 
when you're talking about government, it doesn't get much bigger than that. Yeah. You know, to come and get that. And, you know, as a Native American, I understand it maybe not from the same perspective, but from a similar perspective, because we've had to come up against the government on so many different issues for water rights and land and just, you know, human rights. So I get a little bit of, um, of what you've been up against. So when you started, you got this vision and was the vision that you needed to express yourself painting and was that to overcome the depression or the fear or just all those negative feelings or how did that vision come about? It, it literally, the, 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 I, I did kind of understand the channeling of the clown part until okay. I got into it. And my grandfather was a clown. He was a, a boyhood friend of Emmett Kelly, the big clown that was back, the hobo clown. I that love was, Emmett Kelly. Uh, yeah, that was bad. And he uh, actually, I think the college, the Ringland Brothers and Bailey Circus School of Clown, which I think is located in Florida, it's named after Emmett Kelly. But my grandfather knew him and he wanted to be a clown later in life after he finished his retired from his businesses and things that he had. And he basically, this is back in the 60s when I was three or four years old, he painted a white face on me and called me Jumper because I was a little kid. And, I, and he took me out on some of his, his uh, events that he had. And... Um, so that's where that, so when I had this, this spark and this spiritual awakening, I always think that, where did the jumper come from? It must be coming from my grandfather in some shape or form. And I kind of understand. You your grandfather in, and then probably that was a very, I would imagine, a very happy moment for you. Yes. And his, um, when I started putting, applying the, the white face on me and I would go out in public, people freaked out if so so i kind of started realizing then the reason for being jumper maybach is because i'm different and to show people that just because you are of a different color white face a clown different doesn't make you any less human than anybody else the person on the other side of you that is actually you're looking at so it, it, it's a part of the art. It's a part of the whole reasoning and, and, and to get acceptance of people finally waking up to the fact, oh, uh, I understand the point of what he's doing now as far as being different and having them to overcome. Because, you know, there's a part in the film when the, they were doing the documentary, I always mentioned that, you know, why is he, why are they, why is somebody doing this to me? Is it because you, or is it because they're feeling different or, or, or are they having a problem? There's something within them that's causing yes. them to project their fear off onto me. Is it because they have this unknown ability, a clown, like not everybody wakes up with a clown near them. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're not raised around clowns. So what if you're, what if I was black and I lived somewhere where I never had hung around somebody of a different color? So reach within yourself, try to figure out why you feel different. Why does that person bother you and overcome it? So Jumper Maybach, the clown is just as much a part of the expression of ending hate and intolerance and bullying in the world through that persona. And the art is the same way. You, you, you I create a piece that I felt like, well, it, it, it it's strange. I, I have many different ways I paint, but when somebody sees the art that know my work, I, I, I could have a piece that don't have, I didn't really know it until I went to this fair and everybody was bringing in the art to install it into the into the little space and nobody saw the name on it. Uh, 
but they say, oh, those, that's a jumper Maybach going by. So I, right. it, it, it speaks to them in a way of, 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 of that is uh, a significant presence that that's they know what the message is. Yes, which is, that's what art is about. I want to archive in history in a hundred years, I want them to know why I painted that piece, uh, the story behind it, and brings them back to the 21st century, 2020, knowing of all the traumas that we're going through right now. Well, and let's talk a little bit about that because I think that you're right. I've been working with artists for a really long time. And it is interesting, especially when you're working with an abstract artist, that there is a signature there. And a lot of people that look at abstract art, they will say, oh, my kid could do that. Or, you know, they, they, don't, really, um, zone, they don't really zone in on the subtle nuances of color or the way that an artist works. And I agree with you, somebody who has been exposed to art and has had that experience, they can start picking out I know who that artist is and you're you're right about that but back to your work and the pieces do does each piece have a story behind it uh yes okay like I have some of the because i'm in this in the boutique right now and some of the pieces are from my venetian yeah story. let's see one and let's hear the story yeah Like, uh, okay, I guess I need to turn this around here, huh? Yeah, there's a camera. Ah, I'm learning. Flipping <laughs> around a lot there. Me too. <laughs> it takes a minute, trust me. I'm still learning this technology. Well, I'll, I'll do, do a little scope of the, of the boutique. That's great. And every, uh, what my whole mission is in, in life is to get people to hold the the uh, a piece of art that could be a, a handbag could be a, a, a person could have a tie they can have a scarf and it kind of uh, gets people to to really jump on the mission that i'm trying to do what so I, they're living what with I, art they're not just looking at it they're actually interacting with the art pieces like this piece here is a is a it's jumper's lake and when i was in venice there is this lake that is outside of venice um uh, and venice is like a provenance a providence of italy that's inside there's like all these different places around venice that is like straw uh, S-T-R-A is a, a part of Venice, but a lot of people don't know that Venice also has a lot of land mass. It's not just a bunch of canals. Okay. And within Venice is this amazing, is this amazing lake that just puts you in the total, I don't know, it's about it. It's almost like you almost can touch, touch your soul when you're there. So I gave tribute to this lake because it, it, it gives a, a, uh, a story of relaxation, overcoming any type of, uh, of, of problem in your life. And you can actually kind of see the trees in it. Yes. And, and um, so it's a huge piece, but I had 39 pieces that ended up at an exposition there in Venice that I had. And uh, then there's one over here. Well, that so one back, we back in need right now during the COVID time, that's for sure. We and need that relaxation, so that's a good one. And this is the sickle, you know, for the, the communism, the Russian part that I'm trying to teach through my art that, you know, uh, uh, Putin is kind of, anti-gay yes. <laughs> a lot of, to say so the when i was in venice i thought what else i could get closer to russia here i should do some uh some pieces to explain why i i did that and and to try to get them to i think at the time when i painted this it was they had their navy the their their navy they actually went underwater and put a bunch of signs down in the ocean 
that had uh, uh, talked about Putin. And a lot of people don't know about that, but the submarines, when they go through that and through through looking at it, they could find these these signs where they the a lot of the gay sailors that's in in the Russian Navy that it was a way they could they could protest what was happening to them in Russia, but they had to do it under uh, in the sea. So that's the that. reason I ended up painting this piece was to try to help the navies in Russia the Navy sailors in Russia. Yeah, I had no idea. That's really interesting. But if you Google it, you'll eventually, you'll find these little signs that they put out under in the ocean that had stuff talking about uh, um, uh, Putin and discriminating against uh, LGBT gay people. So that I thought it was interesting. So I did a, little tribute for them. So some of your art is a little controversial then. Yes. And uh, if they ever ask the story behind it and uh, you know, and I make, I make t-shirts all off the art. That's great. Well, it's nice because not everybody is in a position to collect a painting. And so that gives people more options to be able to enjoy your art and wear it and, you know, also have that message that you're bringing forth, which I think is really important. And the purses, the handbags. Well, we can never go wrong with those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and a sailboat. This is a painting called Sailboat. This is Venetian rain, a painting I, I have that is made from that so it's it's amazing what you can do with um with art and how you can make some amazing products from that i love it i think it's so, great and i think it opens up a whole world of opportunity for people to be exposed to art which is you know what you're here for what i'm here for is to bring forth that creativity, which soothes people, especially in, you know, these difficult times. So what have you been doing during the shutdown with COVID? Really, you know, we, we pretty much have been, that, that's one thing about, I have my, my studio, then I have my employees that I basically had them working from home. Okay. And, and and we really were busy designing other pieces. Like I'm coming out with a messenger bag. So I, I had them uh, doing their part to, to contribute to us getting it out. Uh, it, they're supposed to be in in November. So for the Christmas holiday, we're, we're probably going to start taking pre-sales for it on the website for the messenger bags. One of the big, the one I really like the most is I have a painting called uh can't fix stupid so we're made a messenger bag with that painting on it so that that should be an amazing uh uh bag once it comes out but that's uh, a great we, yeah i love that and you know i'm sure there'll be a lot of people um wearing that next to the person who is not wearing their mask correct <laughs> and i and i also developed some masks which they're on the website that uh to kind of contribute a little bit, you know, for this COVID for, because at first, it, you know, you couldn't get a mask. <laughs> so everybody was trying to come up with a solution for to wearing masks. Uh, there are a lot more out there, but I have uh, masks that are developed. Well, I uh, think we all went through kind of this trying on all these masks and i had some beautiful masks actually my mother made me a couple of them the problem was i couldn't breathe in them uh, yes so i was suffocating with this mask on so i think they've come a, a lot further and you probably have one that is both gorgeous to wear and also something that you can actually breathe in yeah one of them since we're on the it's only me here right now but this is one of them <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so but, um, were any of the shows that you had planned um, canceled because of the COVID? Uh, yes. And there were pretty much, uh, you know, the it, it's still pretty much locked. We're not locked down, but people are so used to being at home 
And right. I think they buy a lot of stuff online so much now. So do. I, we don't have, we do not have the foot traffic that we had before. So I had, um, I had postponed John Douglas's uh, uh, show here and we had it maybe, a, I forget when we had it. I remember we had it booked for March. I think we did it in June. And we pretty much, we had a, uh, probably about 50, 60 people showed up. That's but, good. But we had to have security. They had to monitor how many came in. Uh, they had to have their temperature taken. So we followed all the CDC protocols right. to have the show. And uh, so I, I would, as time goes on, I'm hoping to have more here. But right now, it's pretty much de just developing the website and and to get the um, uh, change the whole dynamics of how I get the art out there. Right. I had a website before, but the it wasn't a type of website that integrated the products where you could actually buy from it. Correct. And well, I think that, that's really probably in a lot of ways the way of the future, just like we're interacting right here. You know, I was out on the road filming, but now it's all, um, you know, either Skype, Zoom or Facebook Live, this type of venue. But I think, you know, for creatives, it actually is something that we're learning, something new. We're learning technology and it's also giving us an opportunity now to reach the entire world you know, through these type of platforms. So for creatives, you always find a way. So with going back to your film, did you already do the actual film or is it um, just an idea at this point? No, it's it's done. It's won four film awards. It's been to film festivals and it's won the awards. It's now at the, it's actually being subtitled. Okay, and, got it. And, and um, closed captioned and being, uh, what do you call it? Um, well, you actually present it to all the different platforms okay. that are out there, like Netflix, uh, Lulu so, or whatever, Hulu. <laughs> so I mean, if somebody wanted to watch it, like the viewers that are watching right now, I know that, you know, it's a little bit of a tease but is yeah. there a place they can go and, and pay for it or, you know, see a, some clips? Oh, they, they can, they can, uh, uh, go to the website and actually, I think there's a documentary, uh, play about jumpers world. Okay. That takes them to the actual, uh, a little bit of stuff about the actual, uh, uh, show. Um, uh, hopefully I'm thinking probably by, november it should be on one of the major platforms all right either what? itunes netflix or because it's being promoted to 90 different countries so someone's got to pick it up here in the United absolutely States. and it's such an incredible story so you know when it's all said and done i mean you have really impacted a lot of people's lives and you're an activist um, for gay rights, which is so important. What would you like people to reflect on with your life and your art? Just that, especially today, back in 2011, it wasn't so much of a bullying problem and a uh, hate agenda, but oh my God, I don't know. Look, look at all these riots. I know. They, they call them peaceful protests. Those are not peaceful protests. And projecting hate out onto people just because of, you know, I don't know if it's something in the water, but it's, a, <laughs> it's, no. a lot of, it's just a lot of insanity going on. So it, what I hope is that my art and, and, and the brand itself tries to cool down all of these tensions in yes. some shape or form. Let them go and read about me or when the movie comes out, the documentary movie go out there and watch that to see what you can do to somebody's life because you hated them or you didn't like them. And, and I'm, it's more than just gay rights for me. It's, it's one thing I've discovered a lot 
is that since I've become Jumper Maybach and I've had a lot of shows, gallery, I have so many people that come to me because of their uh, uh, their size. They get discriminated because they're of a different size. A, 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 a lot of different of all the all kinds of people, even the the uh, people of different races come to me and say, well, they've been discriminated and they they understand my story. So it's about everyone, not just the LGBT uh, I population. I, th I think that what my whole intention and the agreement when they wanted me to do the film was that my film must be shown in school districts, must be shown in colleges. It has to it has to go to every aspect of society. I don't think at the time when I started talking to them about it, that they understood that mission of why I'm doing it. It's more, it's more than just getting a famous thing out there. It's about the message behind it. It's not just because Jumper Maybach wants to make money off this purse or off this painting. It's about them gaining that awareness of ending hate and, 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 get, and stop the bullying and the social media is just unbelievable as far as the the amount 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 of hate and and information being thrown out there to us all that we don't even know what <laughs> what the truth is anymore. No, you're right about that. And there's so, all kinds of crazy thoughts about even the COVID. But I think your message is, you know, your message is truth. And whenever you speak the truth. There, it's going to go through all of the layers of misinformation because truth is truth. And what you're really saying is, is that we need to be accepting of, of, the, of the human race in general. We may have different ideas about things, but at the end of the day, we are all flesh and blood. We're all human beings. And having that means that we're important every single person on this planet has something to give and has a gift that we would really be at a loss if we don't receive that gift whether it's art or music or anything yes. um, everybody's important and i really appreciate you standing up for that truth because it's something that we need right now on this planet globally more than we need anything else and you're expressing it through your art so i commend you for that well it's, thank you it's and, and really one of the, a great thing one of the biggest things i don't know if, I, I always i think about should i mention this or not but i one thing i've noticed a lot on social media is this cancel they call it cancellation culture where if i don't agree with you with the way you think then i'm canceling you Right. What type of bullying is that's the worst case of bullying I ever heard where we're, we live, especially in the United States. We live in an environment where we're all supposed to have the freedom to speak our mind and have that freedom without having to be attacked or beat up because you're you think a different way or you have a, a political way you think. And I, I found that a lot of people that say that they're all for ending hate, bullying, and intolerance in the world. You make a comment about when they make some comment, well, I hate this, I hate that, and I interject on social media. I've been told not to do that anymore, but I can't help it sometimes. <laughs> I hear somebody that is supposed to be real, real tolerant will make some comment on social media that I said, that that's hateful. You're not, you shouldn't say that. You don't want people to hate you, so why are you saying that you hate them? And so it's it's just you know. It I'm can be like tough. I mean, I'm so. guilty as well. <laughs> I mean, I haven't canceled people. I've thought about it. Trust me. You know, there it is. It's it is a tough thing because we as human beings, we you know, most of us think we pretty much have it figured out, but I think just keeping a little window open to think about somebody else's opinion. Yes. And be okay if you don't agree. You know, that is really what tolerance is all about. And giving oh, yeah. people 
you know, that right that we all have the right to feel the way that we do. We don't have to agree, but we do have that right. I think that's what you're saying, but I think you're saying it in a really kind way and you're using your art as a platform to reach people in a way that is not attacking and it's not something that would be offensive. It makes people, you know, have joy and most people who are experiencing a new message, if it's brought forth in love and joy and respect, which is what you're doing with your art, I think it's much more well received. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So folks, this is an incredible individual on the planet right now who has stood up for human rights really all over the planet. And I really encourage you to go to his website it's Jumper Maybach. We have it right there on the ticker. So go to his website, take a look at what he's creating, um, share his, his website, his platform on your social media, because we need more people like you, Jumper. We really do. And I oh, really well, appreciate you. you. Thank you. And it's so, I'm so honored that you wanted me to be on your show, so. Well, I love art. You're a great artist, and you know what has really been the the cherry on top is hearing your story and hearing your heart and what you're about. So keep doing what you're doing. The world needs that more than it's ever needed it before. And we're going to be sure to um, continue to promote you. And then who knows, maybe when all this settles, you can come west, further west, and have a show in my gallery. Oh, okay. I'd love to. It would be really great fun to have you out here. Okay. All right, Jumper. Be well, my friend, and we'll see you again on Art of the City. Okay. Well, you take care. Okay, you take care as and well. Bless you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye-bye. So another great creative, folks. Art of the City, this is what we're about. We're about bringing these great artists to right here to your social media screen and we're hoping to bring more on we have a couple of great artists coming in in september we have mackenzie thorpe and for those of you who who know who mackenzie is he's a artist that comes out of the uk just one of those talents that also has impacted the world you can look him up i'm going to have to do a live i mean a um taped interview of him and then we'll stream it live and that will be on the 23rd and then on the 30th we have an artist Romero Brito I know him as Brito he um, was one of those artists that when I landed I believe it was in JFK he had this really great sculpture right as you land to go to New York and it's a big apple and you just get all excited when you walk through the airport because um, it's like the big greeting, the moment of greeting you at the airport. So I'm so happy to be back, Art of the City. Please do me a favor and share this platform on your social media. Let people know we are bringing art to the world. We need art, we need creatives, we need hope, and that's what art brings. Also, if you've missed any of the episodes, um, specifically from Indian Country, just go to Art of the City TV on YouTube. We have a channel there and we've, we've saved all of those live interviews and it's, you know, it's worth, um, it's worth a go look, see, there's some great artists there. So have a great week, folks. It's uh, Wednesday and we'll be meeting every Wednesday, 4 p.m. live streaming right here, Art of the City. See you soon. <laughs>